Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some romance recommendations with brooding heroes. Baby, baby. I just want to mention sorry for the lighting. It's... I have, I have nowhere else to film currently and this is what we're dealing with. I love the angst and the tension that comes with a brooding hero, so... Let's, let's get into the recommendations. First, I want to mention Jacob from Actor Age Eve Brown by Tally Hibbert. So this is a romance book between Jacob and Eve. And Eve is the youngest sister, part of the Brown Sisters series family. And um, she's in need of a job. And Jacob is the owner of a local bed and breakfast. And he's in need of a chef. And so Eve just decides to walk in one day out of the blue with no resume, not prepared whatsoever. And Jacob is like baffled by this woman. He's like, I don't like this woman. She is walking in with wet hair, a weird saying on her shirt, a bright t-shirt, and she has no resume. Like, I'm not hiring her. Um, but then Eve may or may not end up accidentally hitting Jacob with her car while they're both leaving the bed and breakfast. And she has to fill the role while he is injured in bed and ends up staying in like the room connected to his in the bed of breakfast to help take care of him and she feels really guilty and is really sorry about it but jacob in here is so swoony he also has autism he talks about that a lot that is a very big uh topic in here and i love the discussion of autism in here and then eve also starts to realize that she may also be autistic um which was a very interesting thing to read about. Um, you don't really get to read about people discovering that they're autistic, you know? Anyway, I just love Jacob. He's very broody in here. He's very gruff. I think that's his way of like um, distancing himself from people because he only is really close to like, like he said, his best friend and one other person in his life. And then everyone else can basically screw off. <laughs> like, um, except for the people who go to his bed and breakfast, he is very accommodating and nice towards them. Like he even makes sure to provide any accommodations that somebody needs. For example, if someone has really bad anxiety, they have weighted blankets at the bed and breakfast to help them if they need them and other things like that. But he is a very broody dude and I love him so much. Next I have Beast from the Beast by Katie Robert. This is the fourth book in the Wicked Villain series. The series is a reimagining of Disney fairy tales. <laughs> Let's start this over. <laughs> this is The Beast by Katie Robert. Um, this is a reimagining of Beauty and the Beast, where this is the romance between the reimaginings of Belle, Beast, and Gaston. So in this book, it's Isabel, Gaten, and Beast. So previously, before this book started, these three knew each other. They both lived in Isabel's father's territory, and Isabel had a relationship with each of these men. However, both of them were sick of her not choosing between the two of them, and they left. Her father's territory. Now her father has passed away and her older sister has taken over the territory. She needs Gaten and Beast back to help protect her. And so she goes to find them and beg them to come back with her. And they tell her that they'll come back with her if they spent if she spends, I think, a week or two weeks with them. And then in the end, they she has to pick somebody or else they won't go. And so this is about them spending those couple weeks together. Anyway, Beast is one of the guys in here and he slowly starts to realize through the progression of them being together that he's not gonna let go of both of these people because he is falling in love with both of them. So it ends up being a thruple situation here. He is very broody. He is the silent one between the two. He is the dangerous one between the two. Even though Gaten is buffer and larger, Beast is the one that people watch out for. He is the one that people try to avoid at all costs, but he is hot he is caring he is lovable like he has some love to give and he's gonna give it to gaten and isabel uh i just adore him so much i also adore gaten but he's more of like a sunshine golden retriever character so that's why i'm not talking about him in this video <laughs> next i have sworn to the shadow god by ruby dixon this is the second book in the aspect and anger series this is her fantasy romance series where there's a prequel that's like really tiny, it's a novella. And then the main books in the series are like 600 page books. So this book is very long, but it is so worth it. So each book in this series, um, besides the prequel, is about a human woman from our land getting sucked through a portal into a fantasy land. The fantasy land is where this book in the series takes place. So in this world in this fantasy land at the time that these books take place in there are these gods these many different kinds of gods and they get 
cast out by their godfather, kind of like Zeus. They get cast out by their father into the mortal realm to learn a lesson, essentially. And to live on the mortal plane, on the mortal realm, they need a human anchor to anchor them to the realm. That human person that they're anchored to will sleep for them, eat for them, all those kinds of things. They can't do anything mortals can do so they have to anchor themselves to a mortal so the mortal can do those things for them to live. Our heroine here is the human woman that has been anchored to essentially the god of hell or the god of the underworld um and there is bickering angst this guy is broody he's the king of the underworld he's got to be broody. I will say you cannot read this book on its own you have to read the previous book before this one at least, or you will not understand what's going on at all. Um, I recommend reading the prequel first, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, the guy in here, I forget his name, but he's essentially the god of death. He is very, very, very broody. <laughs> and he sometimes even takes it out on the heroine and the heroine just wants to get under his skin and to get to know him. And sometimes he's just a shut book and it takes her, it takes him a while to open up to her, so. Next, I have Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. This is the second book in the Hot and Hammered series, and this is the romance between Rosie and Dominic. This is actually a married in trouble romance, so the two of them are married, but their relationship is not great. They fell for each other around 10 years ago, and Dominic was in the army, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. When he comes back from service, he's kind of a changed man, and he doesn't act the way the same way he did when they first got married. And like, he's not as attentive. He barely speaks to Rosie and she's kind of fed up with it. And she essentially tells him, I'm going to leave you unless you come to marriage counseling with me. He reluctantly agrees to go with her. They learn how to better communicate and be better partners to each other. And it is really sweet. I personally love this one. I know not a lot of people do. I love it. I love a good marriage and trouble romance. Dominic in here is very broody because of what he went through in the war and he kind of has PTSD from it. Um, he's very guarded and broody and he's been putting this wall between him and Rosie because he essentially doesn't want to lose her but he also doesn't want to hurt her and he doesn't realize that by him distancing himself he is also hurting her and there's a lot of talk in here about love languages which I think is really important to discuss in any relationship and so I really enjoy this one and I really recommend it. Next I have Rustic Hearts by Amber Kelly. This is a small town romance between a girl from New York City who is visiting her dad um, in Popular Falls which is a very small town and her dad owns this ranch. Our heroine here Braxton works on this ranch. The moment that they meet, they can't help but bicker with one another. They do not get along whatsoever. And he does not really open up about himself at all. And he's very judgmental towards our heroine because she has very fancy clothes on at a ranch and isn't willing to really get down and dirty um, like he is. I don't mean that metaphorically. I mean, physically down and dirty, like working on the ranch. <laughs> But yeah, it takes him a while to open up to our heroine because he has gone through some things in his past, especially with his family. Um, his parents have both passed away and that has affected him, obviously. The more time they spend together, the more they open up to one another and then they obviously fall in love. And I really like this one. I need to continue on with the series. But yeah, if you love a good small town romance, if you love The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, you would adore this one because it has a lot of similarities to it. Next, I have The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. This is a cowboy romance and our heroine in here, she's a writer and she decides to go on a getaway trip to Texas and she finds this uh, cabin to rent on Airbnb. And so on her way driving there, her car ends up getting stuck in the mud close in close vicinity to the ranch. And this very broody man, our heroine here, ends up saving her from the mud, gets her car out of the mud, but he's kind of rude and they don't really get along when they're conversing with one another. And so she ends up driving away, gets to her destination and is just thinking like, that guy was so rude, whatever, I will never see him again. Turns out he is the owner of said ranch and he didn't know that his grandmother put the cabin for rent and he is not very happy about it. And so the two of them have to spend some time together because they're living on the same ranch and there's even a point where they have to stay in the same cabin together at one point. I just love this one. I think this is another, this is another ranch romance, I guess, guys who work on ranches. <laughs> are broody guys, but he is very broody. He has a very difficult life, or he did. Um, he's a very famous baseball player, but his family ended up experiencing a very big tragedy and he had to quit what he was doing, quit the sport to go take care of his family. He feels like since there's been such a big break in him playing baseball that he will never be able to play again. 
Um, and so the heroine tries to show him how he still has that raw talent that he always had and he is practicing more and getting back into baseball. And so I really love the discussion of baseball in here too. Then I have The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham. This is a historical dark romance. So this is the romance between Poppy and Asher. Poppy is a botanist. She works with plants a lot. She loves flowers and she ends up being hired to work for Asher's sister who's trying to put on this giant ball and she wants flowers just everywhere in there. And so that's how her and Asher meet. They meet while they're getting ready for this ball. And Asher has a very tragic past and he is very, he's a very damaged hero too. And so he's kind of rude to Poppy and very abrasive towards her and especially Bruni. He's a pretty dude. He may or may not take out his frustration and his past by going to this specific type of club. He goes to a club late at night to kind of get his frustrations out <laughs> um, in a consensual way, obviously. Anyway, the two of them, Poppy and Asher, end up having to be in a marriage of convenience and you figure out why and he's very reluctant to do this because he feels like he's gonna shackle her to a life that she doesn't deserve because of what he has gone through. He is one of the broodiest hero heroes I've ever read ever, especially because of his dark and tragic past. But I did really enjoy this one and I need to read more of Scarlett Peckham for sure. Next I have a favorite of mine from 2021 which is Wicked of S by Cressley Cole. This is the um 17th book in the Immortals After Dark series. This is a paranormal romance series. Th this is the romance between Calliope and Sian. Sian is kind of like the ruler of this underworld realm and uh, Calliope is a fae princess. Calliope doesn't know that she's the reincarnation of the mate that Sian had hundreds of years ago. And so he sees Calliope one day and is like, what is she doing here? She is dead. My my mate who ruined my life is dead. What is going on? He finds out that she is Calliope now and she is a reincarnation and she has no memory of her past life. He doesn't believe that though. He does not believe that she doesn't remember what she did to him. And so he kidnaps her and puts her in his castle in his underworld realm, tries to get the truth out of her, even though Calliope does not know what the heck is going on. But Calliope is not some meek woman who will take the punches. She's gonna fight back and I love that about her. She is a total warrior woman. I love this one. It's one of my favorites in the series. I adore it. Sian in here has a very tragic past so he's very broody. He doesn't open up easily to Calliope um, because of what his previous mate did to him who looks exactly like Calliope right now. So old memories are popping back up. He's just gone through a lot, okay? <laughs> and he doesn't take his anger out, especially in this in, in the in the correct way. I just adore this one and I love seeing a Calliope's relationship at the end. It is totally 100 percent thousand percent worth it. Next, I have a fan favorite. I have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is the romance between Brie and Archer. And Brie is new to this very small town and she comes across Archer one day and he doesn't speak a word to her. She wonders why. So she asks some of the townspeople um, who this man is and they basically tell her he is the town recluse. He doesn't go out anywhere. That is Archer. He doesn't speak a word. And so she makes it her life mission to befriend Archer because she thinks that everybody deserves a friend. And so she decides to be that friend for Archer. And so she goes in search of him at his house and becomes very close with him, gets to know him very well. And then they end up falling in love. Archer in here doesn't speak because he was in an accident when he was younger where his vocal cords were severed and because none of the townsfolk will take the time and have enough patience to get to know him, he just decides to distance himself from everybody and brood alone by himself like a Boo Radley. <laughs> Bree gets to know Archer and is patient enough to and actually knows some ASL um, to communicate with him, he is blown away by this. He finally feels like he has someone he can relate to and talk to and finally have a friend in life. Um, and it grows into something more. Archer is a very innocent hero and Bree kind of shows him the ways of the world and I I loved it. He is broody at the beginning, but then he slowly turns into this big, big, big cinnamon roll softy. And lastly, I have The Highlander's Forbidden Bride by Donna Fletcher. This is the last book in the Sinclair Brothers series. I recommend that you read these books in order because the previous three books, the side plot or the um, a kind of kind of continuous plot throughout the previous three books is trying to find the Sinclair brothers are trying to find their missing brother. They have not been able to find their brother. This book is about the brother that is missing. Um, so you kind of need to read the other books to understand who this hero is and why he did what he did and what has been going on with him for three years. His name is Ronan and he was kidnapped by these this evil Highlander clan. And while he was there, he was beaten and bullied and 
this woman would come and care for him and um, patch up his wounds and everything like that. And he saw her as an angel. But then he believes that Carissa, who is the daughter to the Highlander chief who kidnapped him, um, killed that woman. And when he escapes, he makes his life mission to kill Carissa and her father for what he did to the woman he thinks he's in love with. He ends up kidnapping Carissa after he escapes their camp. Ronan is very broody. One of the broodiest heroes I've ever read about ever because he has experienced some awful things, awful abuse, awful torture. I love this one because a lot of the book, he is in a forced proximity uh, situation with Carissa. They're stuck in a cabin together with one bed. There's one bed trope in here. Um, but it is totally worth reading the other books in the series before you get to this one because you will probably be very lost and confused if you don't read the other books. So I think all the books are great in it though. I've given all of them four or five stars. So, But there you have it. Those are some brooding hero romance recommendations for you. Please let me know if you read any of these books or if you plan to. But if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me any kind of flower emoji down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching and we'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.